Hello and welcome to the first video of the timeline series. Now, the timeline function of Papyrus is brilliant. It's really great for keeping your pacing of your book correct, following the arcs and the storylines of your characters. Um, it is just a vital part of the software. Now, what I'm about to show you is the way I personally use the timeline. Um, I think it's an easy way, but there are lots of different ways that you can use it. Um, so feel free to explore the timeline yourself. It's a great function, like I say, for pacing uh, and even for planning out your books. So with that said, let's jump straight in. Right, so what I thought I'd start by doing is opening a project with um, quite a propagated timeline. So to open the timeline, you would come up to this icon that looks like a clock and just click it. So um, since I first made this video, there's been uh, quite a few updates to Papyrus Author, one of which is the Authors menu. So this Authors menu uh, gives you everything you would need as an author, including another way to open the timeline, which you do from here. So this is the way I would set out my standard timeline with three threads and um, in scenes, events and chapters. Across the top here, you can see the time scale. So the time scale can be denoted, which I'll show you in a moment, right down to seconds if you like. Down here is the overview of your timeline. And there's a slider bar. So as you slide this around, if you click and hold onto the slider bar, it will move you through the time timeline. And if you adjust the size of the slider bar, you sort of zoom in and zoom out. You can also zoom in and zoom out by holding control and using your mouse uh, wheel to scroll in and out. And you can zoom in and out. Okay, so that's what we're going to end up looking like um, when we create this timeline in the next it, uh, over this video. So I'm just going to pause and open a fresh empty document. Okay, so now I've generated another project that's completely empty, uh, just has the two uh, uh, empty chapters that are generated by Papyrus. So I'm going to return to the timeline, and as you can see, there's nothing there other than the two empty chapters. So I'm going to start setting that timeline up now. So the first thing I did, would do is right click on the empty area of um, the timeline and go to show threads and threads. Now the first thing I want to do is set the start date um, of my book. So I want it to start on the 6th of the 8th 1978 okay now here where it said show prefer time or uh, prefer to show story time this what this would do is every time you generated a chapter from the date that I just entered each chapter would represent one day this would be really useful let's say for instance if you would creating a book that lasted 24 hours and you set that to hour every time you generated your chapters say 24 uh, chapters you would end up with a chapter an hour long but I don't want that I want to set the timeline myself so I'm going to turn that option off I'm then going to set how the time should be seen because I'm English I always have the day first so I'm going to choose that I want it with weekdays and I'm going to go to a precision, a precision of an hour rather than a minute because, you know, I, I it's not that specific. Actually, no, I will. I'll go to the minute and I'm going to tick uh, show a, use AM and PM and I'm going to go apply and close. So that's now adjusted where chapter one starts so chapter one is now automatically being moved to the 6th of august 1978 and again if i zoom in using control in my scroll wheel you can see that now if i grab hold of anything within the timeline 
as long as it isn't protected, I can move that around. So I can manually adjust uh, timeline entries just by dragging and dropping within the timeline. But I'll show you the way I normally do it, which is from the navigator. However, before we return to the navigator to create entries, there's one more step, which is creating the threads. This is a thread. Okay, so now we're at the point of creating the thread. So what is a thread? Well, a thread can be whatever you want. It can be a, a, store, a, a personal character arc. So it could be for, you could have a thread for each individual character. You could have storyline arcs. So you could have one thread following a war, let's say, that's running through your book and another that's following a romance. Personally, what I do, I keep it down to two or three uh, threads, which is main story, um, events and scenes. And sometimes I also add key events. Uh, now, like I say, this is a personal preference. Feel free to have as many threads as you want and to create the, the threads how you want them. So let's get back to the video. Okay, so to create your thread, I'm going to go right click, show threads and threads again. But this time I'm going to stick in the timeline threads. Um, now at the moment, there's the one thread of main story. I always keep that and I keep that reserved for my chapters. But I add another thread, which I call scenes. And obviously this one is reserved for my scenes. I then add another one and I call it main events and I hit enter. Now these colors are automatically generated by Papyrus. You can keep those if you like, but I always like to choose my own colors. So I always like green for the main thread. I always like blue for the scene thread and red for the event thread. But again, that's up to you. Apply and close. Another way of creating a thread, again, from within um, the timeline, but not using the method I just showed you. Let's say you want chapter two in another thread all on its own. If I drag it down to a blank part of the timeline and release it, it will generate that thread. And I can go show threads and I can rename that thread. So I could rename that to master events. Okay, and close. So again, from within um, the timeline, you can drag and drop. So now I'm going to return to the main document and I'm going to start generating timeline entries uh, from the navigator. Okay, so I'm happy with the date it starts on, but I'm going to say it actually st starts at 7 a.m. And it's going to run for, um, I'm going to say, eight hours. So by pressing the plus sign, I can go eight hours. And that means that it will Start at 7 a.m. plus 8 hours, and I'll apply. When I return to the, uh, the scene, I can see that it starts at 7 a.m. and it runs for seven, um, 8 hours. Okay. So what I would then do is I would then add my text. So I'm going to type really, really fast. Plonk. So that is my text. I always work in scenes, so I'm going to insert a scene here, and I'll call it, it starts. And for the scene, I'm going to select the scene. I'm going to say it started at the time of the chapter, and I want it to run for one hour. So again, plus one hour. And I want to assign it to the scene thread. And I'm going to go apply and you can see it automatically changed that entry to the scene, the scene thread. I'm going to enter another um, scene and I'll just go on it 
goes. Again, magically enter my text. And what I'm gonna do with this scene, I'm gonna make it run from the end of the previous scene for the duration, which means it will run for the duration of the chapter. And I'm gonna go apply. So if I return to the timeline, you can now see that it's created uh, those scenes, the one hour long scene and the scene that runs for the duration. But because I adjusted the time, chapter one is now in front of chapter two. So if I go back to the main document and I select chapter two, I'm gonna go, since previous one ended, I'm gonna go plus 12 hours. And I'm going to say it's going to last for 12 hours. So I'm going to go plus 12 hours again. Oops, what did I do? I want to be in here. So plus 12 hours. And I'm going to protect it this time. I'm going to go apply. When I return to the timeline, you can now see that chapter two is 12 hours exactly after um, the previous chapter and I can't move it because it's protected I can't drag and drop the way I did in the previous um, I, the way I could with these see I can drag and drop these around these are because these are unprotected if these were protected I wouldn't be able to drag and drop them around so I'm going to protect them by right clicking and I'm going to go protect okay now I can create a scene from within here just by highlighting chapter two and going new scene and I'll go here we go and that's created the scene and again I can edit the time in exactly the same way so what I did there to bring this this one up I went right click edit time and I can go since chapter starts um, plus two hours. And I want it in the scenes thread, protect, apply, and it adjusts it there. And if I go back, you'll see it's created it there. Okay, so close. And you can see it's created that scene and the entry. So what you can also do is adjust that time from within the timeline just by dragging and dropping so because it's protected I can't do it at the moment so if I right click and unprotect I can then adjust the timeline or the timeline entry just by dragging if I return to the main document you can see it's now 3 a.m. to 3 40 before it was 3 a.m. to 5 a.m. if I return I can drag it right out here. I'll protect it. If I return, um, you can see it's now 3 a.m. to 7.54. Uh, right, so the final uh, kind of timeline, timeline entry I'm gonna show you is an event. So to add an event, you would right click on your main document and go event. And I'll just say, Peter Falls. Now there are two types of event. There are a key event. A key event would be something really major, like a character dying. Normal event, it might just be him meeting up with someone. So um, a key event, I'm going to make this a key event, and I'm going to go, since chapter started, uh, plus 45 minutes. And I'm going to go, and I obviously I want it in the main events uh, thread. And I'm going to go apply. When I go to the timeline, you can see it's created that event. And again, because it's unprotected, I can move it around. If I lock it or protect it, it's frozen in place. I'll unlock it again. Now, because I set it as a key event, it draws a line through all your timelines. Oh, sorry, all your threads, indicating this is really important. If I go back and just make it an event, you can see that the line is removed. 
okay? So now, um, everything I showed you with creating entries within the Navigator also applies to the organizer. Um, so everything I did here, um, you can use in the, in the organizer, all right? Okay, so that was video one in the timeline series. That was just really an overview of how to use this, this particular function of the software. In the next timeline video, we're gonna dig deeper into the timeline itself and actually look at what can be added to the timeline. Okay, so until next time, see you later.